up guys, Johnny here with Team Legit. Today I've got another exciting product for you guys. Uh, I have some goggles. Uh, well, I want to say goggles. Goggles to me are usually something you go over each one of your eyes. This is more like a helmet. What we got today for you guys is the head play video goggles. These are the latest head play goggles. So we're going to get this box cracked open and show you what's inside. Alright, so we've got the head play goggles out here now. We're going to get the box opened up and uh, check out all the components inside. And I'm going to go ahead and Put them on, power them on, and give you guys my thoughts and think and, and let you know what I think of them. All right. Once we get the box opened up, uh, first thing you see here is a quick, short little guide that they include in here. This is a nice touch. Uh, a lot of times when we send out packages, I always try to put a little note in there if there's something that uh, I think people should know. So we got that right in there. We've got a nice little looks like a carry bag for the actual goggles themselves or the uh, headgear. We've got a small box and a larger box. Uh, let's go ahead and crack open the small box real quick and just see what's inside here. In the smaller box looks like we have our AC adapter. Uh, this is probably for turning on the goggles if you want to maybe watch a movie in the house or you want to do uh, some kind of uh, viewing in or testing maybe in the, in the garage. You don't want to use a battery. You can power it on with this. Uh, I don't think this is going to be very valuable out in the field. Most guys run batteries. So uh, it's a nice touch and it looks like they put all the different uh, country plugs in there. Moving on to the slightly larger box. Oh, this box just falls open. Looks like we got the head play Head play uh, battery here. This is the 2S 1000 milliamp uh, lipo with the barrel plug. It looks identical to the to the batteries that come with the Fat Sharks, and it's actually the same specs as the Fat Sharks. Are they the same brand? We don't know. They might have just gotten the same batteries from the manufacturer, rebranded them. We've got a looks like an all-in-one RCA cable. It looks like with the uh, little barrel plug that connects into the goggles. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, clipping almost like a uh, USB uh, or a, a serial cable that plugs into uh, the goggles. Then you've got the barrel plug, RCA audio and video, and then it looks like a external plug. Maybe if you have uh, additional receiver or something on the goggles, you can power it on from there. And then we've got a barrel plug to the little clip. Uh, this is something unique. I've actually never seen this plug before. It looks like something proprietary for these goggles. We've got the 5.8 whip. Looks like we've got two foam uh, insulation here for either your forehead or whatnot. We'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, they're thinner and thicker density. Um, looks like they just uh, added to the thinner to density ones. Um, these go to probably your forehead and whatnot to help you from sweating bullets into the goggles and also uh, keep them nice and comfortable against your face. Uh, looks like there's a Fresnel's lens here. This is for those nearsighted or farsighted guys maybe. Uh, if you want to get a little bit better view or maybe the stock lens is not working out. Alright, let's put all those components aside. Alright, now on to the main event. This is the goggles here. This is the uh, head play uh, headgear. Uh, do an initial check on it. It looks to be made of pretty good quality. This foam is that EPO, EPS type foam. Uh, a lot of the stuff you guys see on the foamies, the Bixler, the uh, FX61, the Talon, looks like that type of foam, but a little bit more denser. I mean, if my plane was made out of this, I would feel a lot more uh, comfortable flying it a little bit harder, but uh, this is actually pretty tough stuff here. Uh, looks like it's got some uh, head adjustments here, and uh, it's got some, uh, some anti-slip grips here for your actual elastic band and then back here there's an actual GoPro mount um, I'm trying to determine why they would put a GoPro mount back here on the back of your head if you guys know why make sure you guys put that in the comments below because uh, it beats me uh, I don't know why I would want to have a GoPro mounted to the back of my head uh, maybe you can put a tripod or some kind of adapter and have some forward uh, some forward uh, views of what you see and whatnot all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the uh, little locking cable here that uh, plugs right into the top of the goggles. And actually, this looks like the receiver here. And it looks like it only goes in one way. There's a little groove right here that uh, holds it in place, and then it actually locks into place here. All right, that seems pretty easy enough. We've got a little loop right here to stick the top of the wire through. 
And uh, then there's a spot back here on the GoPro mount to uh, Velcro your battery. You know what? To be honest with you, this actually feels like a strap maybe they would have borrowed or made for an actual GoPro or a chest mount and maybe cut down on cost and just took the strap and used it on this instead. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I'm still baffled by what that, that GoPro mount does back here. Alright, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the antenna in here just for testing purposes. Now, on a receiver, it's not super important to have an antenna on there. I just do it out of precaution. But on your transmitters, you make sure you want to run that with an antenna on there. Alright, let's do a quick first power up and uh, see what we got here. It looks like it powered up with the LEDs here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this on. Okay. First thoughts. Um, huge, huge field of view. I'm pushing buttons here trying to see if I can get a menu or something like that to come on. Speaking about menu, there's a, a set of buttons here on the side. Looks like there's a menu, there's a volume button, up, down, and a source. Uh, I'm not sure what the volume button's for. I don't know if maybe the audio video receiver has an output for a uh, headphone jack. I'm not seeing one off the top of my head. There is an HDMI input or output here. It looks like an input uh, right here on the side. So uh, it looks like an HDMI mini. You can probably plug in your uh, HD downlink, uh, probably your light bridge or something like that. There's another button up here on top for uh, changing the channels. And the way you do that is you basically long press to change the band. And then you short press to uh, change the channel. Okay, so let me see if I can get a menu on here. And I do got a menu on. Oh my goodness. Uh, so I've got the goggles on and my first impressions on these things I'm actually really impressed right now um, I did not expect this a lot of the reviews out there are saying that uh, they don't like them they're cumbersome they don't you know seem to uh, focus correctly but the image is very sharp very clear and it's very crisp it almost looks three-dimensional right now on the menu screen that's the only thing I can see right now uh, but it looks very sharp very crisp uh, looking straight ahead, the edges do kind of come up a little bit blurry. Uh, the top corners are a little bit blurry. You actually have to uh, focus where you want to see on the screen. So if you're flying FPV, say on a mini quad or an airplane, on an airplane I think this would be amazing because you've got this amazing panoramic field of view and you're up high and you can see so much good stuff. But on a mini quad where you're flying and you've got like some tunnel vision or something like that, it would make things... Um, I would say feel like you're traveling at warp speed because the image is so large that focusing in the center makes things difficult to focus on the outsides. Um, having them on, I have normal vision, I would say. I mean, I never had any problems with my eyes and the adapters and things like that. I feel like the monitor itself has some curves coming in from the top and the bottom, and that could just be from the sheer size of it and me being so close to it. What I want to do is get a video transmitter plugged in with a mini quad or uh, aircraft and just kind of see how it feels with an actual uh, video feed. So let's go ahead and get that powered up. All right, guys, so I've got my ZMR here powered up with my 600 TV line camera and just my immersion transmitter feeding directly into the goggles. And now that I have this thing on there, this, it, it's pretty cool, actually. Again, it goes back to, I don't know if it's maybe the Fresnel zone or the lens or whatnot, but I feel like everything looks like it's in 3D. I don't know if it's maybe just because of the high quality of video, but I feel like everything feels like 3D. One thing though that I did notice is that the image doesn't seem as crisp as my Fat Shark V2s. And what I mean by that is the edges feel somewhat pixelated a little bit, if that makes any sense. And I think that's just because the camera, I mean the, the, the monitor is just stretching the image out so far that you can see the imperfections of the actual camera. But again, looking through these uh, head plate goggles straight ahead, I find myself looking straight ahead, it, it works great, but uh, when you're wearing them and you feel like you're in a, in a room with a humongous window and you can't help but look around, and I don't know if that could be a distracting thing for some people, when you're flying you obviously want to focus straight and you know kind of get those uh, 
that locked in feel when you're when you're flying through you know uh, proximity through trees and things like that I feel like everything else would kind of uh, cause some distractions again I feel like with an airplane when I'm flying my fixed wing uh, you know uh, 399 feet up in the air and looking around with my camera panning around I think it would be a great view you would have so much to see but uh, overall um, it feels like a digitally enhanced 600 TV line camera over the more natural fat shark feel. One thing though d that I do notice is I feel like the monitor is so big and this is something different than the fat shark HDs. I didn't like the HDs myself personally. I felt like the monitor was really close to my face uh, on the HDs. I felt like the V2 and the HDs were the same good quality image but the HDs were a little bit closer with that wider feel. With these goggles, I feel like you have that HD look, but it's farther back. Uh, I find myself uh, looking down the sides, looking down the edges of the monitor. Uh, and if you look, if I look all the way to the left, I can see the walls, to the right, to the top, you can see the walls. So if I had to make a comparison between these and the Fat Sharks, uh, I would say that my Fat Shark V2s are still going to be my number one goggles to go to. That's just because ease of use and transportability. The HDs I, I think would be a good contender with this guy, however uh, if I'm going to analogize them I would say my V2s would be my everyday line of sight, the HDs would be sitting in the front row of an IMAX movie and sitting with the head place feels like you're up, front, uh, up top and center of a really really nice good quality either IMAX or maybe a 3D movie uh, and you get that great experience. However, the portability and things like that, I think are going to be a killer for me. I mean, yes, they come with this nice little bag and box to carry it in. But when we grab our stuff and go, a lot of the mini guy, mini quad guys or the uh, legit wing guys, we just want to grab our stuff and go. I grab my transmitter, my goggles, everything's in there. Got my other wing. This is probably going to pose a problem for me to take out. But I don't think it would stop somebody from buying it and uh, enjoying them. Again, if you guys are those fixed wing guys and you want to have that immersed feeling, I think this would be a great uh, addition to your fleet or maybe for your passenger to just get that feel. I could see myself getting one of these to put up at a trade show or something like that and letting people get a feel of what FPV is like. But um, me flying with these, I don't think I would do it on a daily basis. Um, we haven't flown with these yet, so I do want to do some testing with uh, flying with them, uh, getting out in the field and actually experiencing them myself. But overall, my initial thoughts um, comparing to, let's say, Fat Sharks, um, it's kind of a different world. It doesn't really compare so much. Alright guys, lastly, I wanted to do a quick comparison against another product as well. I, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of heat for this. I'm comparing the DIY Quantum Goggles from Hobby King. $30, $30 goggles, uh, which pretty much is the same exact concept, just scaled down much, much smaller. Um, I wanted to compare these two, and the only reason I wanted to do this was because for this kit, actually, let's go back. For this kit here, you're paying about $250 plus shipping or whatever it is, uh, whatever the introductory price is. So you're paying about $250 for this, and it's an amazing goggles. I mean, they definitely thought this through. They use a very high quality LCD or uh, the lens, the, the monitor that's in there is very high quality. They have this nice protective plastic around it to hold everything in place. They even gave you this cool little uh, piece right here for your head to support it. And then this guy goes on there so you don't have any issues with, uh, you know, comfortability and things like that. You got a nice little support here for most noses. Uh, my nose uh, to me tends to be pretty big so this actually feels really comfortable for me as well um, but overall uh, the thought that they put in this is very extensive now that being said you've got these guys right here which probably not much thought was put into it it's just basically a monitor encased by foam and the foam I don't think it's the same quality. This guy seems a little more durable, a little more tougher. This is maybe a little bit lower grade. However, I could be wrong. It could also be the case. But this guy right here is less than half the price. You're paying 40 bucks for a uh, goggles or the, the actual case. You've got a, your receiver of your choice. I'm using the Immersion Uno. It's about 60 bucks. And you need some batteries, obviously, to go with it. And, you know, you get this fancy wiring harness as well. And it pretty much does the same exact thing. However, the image. The image quality on this guy versus this, it's definitely noticeable. But 
for somebody getting into FPV, under 100 bucks for a full setup that does the same thing as this versus $250 for this. It just goes with, uh, if you can afford it, get it. If you can't, this might be another solution for you guys here. Um, I actually have a friend of mine that flies this and he loves it. I've let him fly with my V2s. He still prefers this. He actually glued a old baseball cap to the top of this here and he just puts his cap on and he goes. But again, the image quality is definitely uh, something to to take into consideration. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in and uh, show you guys some more close-ups of these different uh, screens. All right, guys, so uh, I've been kind of messing with these myself. I've got my friend Robert here. He actually uh, purchased these head play goggles. These are going to be for him. Uh, Robert wears glasses. So what was your main determination to buy this? Was it because you wear glasses or just you just um, saw the reviews? And you well, I've, I've always worn goggles, and I've never – I have no idea if not wearing glasses is hindering me or not. Okay. I looked into the, the lenses, and um, I'm not, like, farsighted or nearsighted. I'm just kind of – blind blind <laughs> so i didn't i don't know if that would enhance my experience so i thought you know it's good to have a second set and then i can figure out if wearing glasses which one works for you which one's better so the both of us have been going through the different goggles and just kind of messing around and kind of getting our opinions on them um, again these things are amazing phenomenal image uh to me they kind of feel a little bit more 3D and, and an enhanced or digitally enhanced view of the same thing that these guys are seeing. This is your budget system, so it's not really a comparison. Uh, what did you think? You, you have the Attitude goggles, the yes. Fat Shark Attitudes. Um, I mean, for me, it's I, 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 it's hard for me to say what I like better. This looks amazing. I, I don't think anybody would regret buying it. Um, I think it's just a matter of which... I'd have to put some flight time in and, and kind of figure out what I like better. Um, you know, like, Would you take me seriously if I was flying around in a park no. with a transmitter in my hand and I've got these and uh, I'm doing the Nintendo deal where you know you turn better when you tilt your head? Um, would you take me seriously? No. no. Would, would you think that I had issues, uh, personal or mental issues, if I'm sitting around in a park doing this? A little bit. Yeah. And actually doing this is getting me a little <laughs> bit dizzy right now. Uh, and that, that brings me up another point. Um, moving my head around, you can feel it on your head. When you kind of sit straight, or I, I kind of want to, it keeps making me want to look down. I don't know if it's the weight of the front of it making me look down. But um, so, I mean, like you said, the image is phenomenal. Ultimately, flying with them is going to be able to tell if you like them or not. That looks really dorky. I just want to, I, I want to point that out. Uh, great product, just looks really dorky. Luckily, luckily for me, I don't fly around people, so. <laughs> So the cool factor, uh, if you're into that whole um, Daft Punk space look, this will do it for you. So how do they feel? Uh, one thing I noticed that you're not taking your glasses off. Um, I mean, I mean, uh, you you have your glasses on. Yeah. You, you put them on for, uh, for the. For whatever reason, I feel like. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's 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 blurry without my glasses. Where so you I actually my, need your glasses. I need my glasses. With okay. This, where my fat sharks, I don't. Really, I guess I probably don't need my glasses, but I haven't really been able to determine that. And with this, I feel like I, I you have to. Yeah, it's blurry. But for with sure. the fat sharks, I mean, you can't wear your glasses. That's that's. But it's it's, that, cr it's still crisp. It's still crisp. Okay. So I guess that just might be you know, just answered the, my question is that you know with this you need your glasses. Yeah. Okay, and it accommodates that you can't yeah. fit your glasses yeah, on. Totally. And they don't hit the side or anything. These like are kind of wide glasses, and they fit, and they're just fine. Okay, good deal. All right, guys. Well, um, <clears throat> overall, uh, is it a good buy? I think time will tell. Um, I think flying with them a little bit, getting uh, an experience with them, uh, will probably help me make a better determination. For this particular product, they can't say, yes, go out and buy it. You're going to be completely blown away. But then again, I can't say don't buy it because you're going to you know, be disappointed. Like Robert mentioned, uh, it's a great image, and uh, it's not something you will be disappointed with if you do have them. Um, 
I think what I'm going to try to do is get, uh, get my, when my set comes in, I'm going to be doing some mixed flying. I'm going to do some quad flying, and I'm going to do some uh, fixed wing flying, and kind of determine, uh, do I like these goggles, do I not? Again, this is too early to tell. This is original, you know, uh, originally meant to be an unboxing video. I can't tell you, you know, this is going to be the greatest product ever. Uh, personally, I still feel like my V2s are, you know, my greatest investment. Um, I upgraded from the Dominators to the V2s. I still feel like they're my personal investment. Um, these guys, if you're on a budget, not a bad deal. But um, <clears throat> as far as the head play goes, time will tell. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I want to thank Robert for bringing his brand new goggles down here and letting me uh, de-cherry them and open them up and put my you know big nose and sweaty face on it. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave that in the comments below. If you want us to compare this to anything else, please let us know. And uh, if you have some questions, maybe they're specific to you, we'll do our best to try to answer them. If you guys like seeing these new videos, don't forget to hit the like button. I'm Johnny. This is my friend Robert. Take care, guys. What's up guys, John here with Team Legit. Today we're gonna give you guys our thoughts on the new Dominators. We've got all the Dominators spread out here. We've also got a set of attitudes. We got the regular Dominator, third generation, Dominator V2. And we're gonna refer to this one as the V2.2 from here on out. Uh, the only difference between these two is this one has an updated lens um, and a couple little differences uh, as far as the adjustment. And we've got the Dominator HDs. We've been out flying all day. We just got back and uh, it's hot. What not?